Hey there everybody and welcome to another PMAT quick tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about at least one way that you can generate a control channel if the system that you're working with does not inherently use a control channel. As usual, feel free to comment down below or to visit www.thebarkerlab.com and a link for the Barker Lab website as well as a link to the GitHub where you can download PMAT for your own usage is found in the description below the video. So getting right into this, there are a few systems out on the market that don't come with a control channel included. And in some cases, there's a pretty good reason for this, uh, but in other cases, uh, this is just a design flaw in the system. So for example, if you're using a system without movement artifact, like at least one of the wireless systems that are coming out, then that could be a really good reason for not necessarily needing a control channel, um, although you still might need to make some corrections. Let's take a look at the reason for this. So if we just come in and make a plot of data that only has timestamp and signal, then what you can see from this data is that in many cases, you're going to have some sort of a drift over time. The data here starts out at much higher values, around 585, um, and drifts down by the end to where we're at more like 550 or 545. And generally, this kind of drift in the data is caused by photo bleaching. And there are a number of different sources that have been theorized to contribute to this. The most likely case is bleaching of the tissue that you're recording from, uh, but it's also been suggested that the fiber optics that you're recording through, especially if you're using long cables, might also have some uh, bleaching of their photo signals. And there may also be some changes in things like the LEDs as they warm up over time. So depending on who you ask, there are different suggested contributions of each of these, and we don't necessarily need to answer that question to know that we have a drift in our signal over time and that we want to correct for that. The nice thing is that while you're waiting for us to work on some changes in PMAT where we integrate more and more systems into our loading engines, then what you can do is you can produce a quick fix in Microsoft Excel just by fitting a line to the data and using that to help correct for some of this photo bleaching. To do this, click on the data and then right click to add a trend line. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add an exponential trend line. In truth, you could add whatever you want, but my recommendation would be to use an exponential trend line. And then we'll display the equation for this on our chart so that we can see what the values are. This is usually placed somewhere obscure on the chart, so let's move it up to the top and then also make it a little bit bigger so that all of you can see this. So what we have is if we're using our timestamp data here as our X in order to predict our signal data is that we have this exponential line that's uh, predicted by the equation that you see here. So now we can actually use this to generate some control channel data. And th what this is going to do is it's going to be the best fit across our data here um, using an exponential curve. So what I would suggest to make this a little easier is to just come in and copy the equation here. You can use either control C to copy or you should be able to right click and hit copy. And what we'll do is we'll put an equal sign and then we'll just paste this here. And we have to make two slight changes. So the E here needs to be replaced by a multiplication sign in Excel, that's the asterisk, uh, as well as the function for an exponential. So this is going to take this exponential component of our equation here and it's going to um, use the exponential function in Excel to replace the E constant here. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to replace the x value with our timestamp data. So again, we're going to multiply by the timestamp. And we're going to do this just for the first cell. And what that'll allow us to do is to get this first predicted data point. So you can see we've now created a predicted y value for what the data should look like here if we're following this curve. 
And then we want to carry this down for all of the data. So you can either click on this corner square and drag, or if you just double click, it'll carry it all the way down to the bottom and you don't have to worry about doing that manually. So then let's just take a look at what this would look like. So we'll go to our chart design and we'll select more data and we'll add our control channel. So we'll add a series here named control and then our X values are going to be our timestamp column here. And then our Y values are going to be our control channel here. And then we can hit OK. And the way that I'm getting this to go from bottom to top very quickly is to use a combination of keys, shift, end, and up, or shift, end, and down, but you can just as easily drag. And once that's done, you can hit OK. So the thing that I want you to see here is that this curve is going to allow us to subtract for some of the problems here. And the other thing that I want you to see here is that it's not a perfect fix. And the reason for this is that in some cases it's heavily influenced by these peaks in the calcium so the curve rises up a little bit more and then in other cases um, the curve would need to be lower. So this is not a perfect fit and this is why most people would prefer a double exponential fit instead of this regular exponential fit. However, this is not something that you have the option to easily do in Microsoft Excel. So again, while we work on getting some of these, these, these things integrated into the PMAT suite as uh, background coding, then this is a fix that will allow you to work with your data for now, because we're getting a lot of questions from people who have this exact same problem. So if you want to see then what your flattened curve would look like, then you could easily just come in and we could create a delta F column here and all you would do is you would take your signal data and subtract the corresponding control data and then you can again use that double click of that square to take this all the way down to the bottom. We can create an entirely new graph if we want to see this data or we look at the timestamp with this and hopefully what you can see is this new delta F data is a much flatter version where we've at least done the job to eliminate some of the photo bleaching. Now it's again, it's not perfect because this curve is not a perfect fit, but it's certainly much better than it was before. And it'll allow you to work with a slightly cleaner data set that will at least eliminate most of your photo bleaching and other artifacts. And the last thing that you would need to do in order to take these data and to bring them into the PMAT suite is to place them in the proper format. You can find some more detail about this in the video on importing data into the PMAT suite. However, to make this a little simpler here, in a nutshell, we need to delete our plots. We don't want those in the file. And to get to the proper format, we would also delete this delta F column that we've been working with. And then all we need to do is to come in and say file. It's a big data set, so it takes just a second. Save as. We'll save this in as a CSV format. You can save it as a new version if that helps you. And once you've hit saved, you should be able to take the file you've created and import it directly into PMAT. And again, if you need help with that, see our other video. But otherwise, happy analyzing, and I hope this helps. And we look forward to bringing you some new features soon that will make this even easier. Have a good one.